Assalamu alaikum students. My name is uh, Dr. Iram Imran. I am professor and head of department physiology at FRPMC. My email address is drelumiran at gmail.com. Today's uh, lecture is on uh, mechanics of ventilation of breathing which is divided into two parts, part 1 and part 2. And I have made a single presentation of both the lectures. Okay, so if you find any uh, difficulty regarding this lecture, you can contact me on my personal email or you can ask me on Edmodo. Moreover, uh, this lecture, this topic actually is best described in Sharewood. Uh, but if you don't have that Sharewood, you can uh, study from Guyton and also from the my lecture. But if you want to study the best of it, it is given in the shared book. Now, what are the learning objectives of this lecture? At the end of the lecture, the sh you should be able to discuss the steps of inspiration and expiration. I told you inspiration and expiration together, they are known as ventilation of breathing. With respect to pressure changes, thoracic cage and muscles of breathing. Define transpulmonary pressure and its importance. Discuss the role of accessory muscles of ventilation during forceful breathing. So these are the learning objectives. The first learning objective is quite in, uh, detailed actually. Okay, you will see. So now we will discuss the factors that affect the pulmonary airflow. We are discussing the mechanics of pulmonary ventilation that is air moving in and out of the lungs means that oxygen from atmosphere coming in the lungs breathing in which is known as breathing in and or inspiration and the air uh, carbon dioxide moves from lungs to the atmosphere which is known as breathing out or expiration okay so this air flow in and out of the lungs depend on two factors number one is delta p and other is resistance so this f is equals to delta p upon r f is actually the air flow and delta p is pressure difference and r is the resistance so air flow is directly proportional to delta p and inversely proportional to resistance now let's discuss what is delta p is actually delta p is the pressure difference air always flow from high pressure to low pressure Yaad rakhna hai ke air is flowing uh, from high pressure to low pressure. Isi tarah blood bhi jab flow karta hai, it flows from high pressure area to low pressure area. So air also flows from high pressure area to low pressure area. So air flow is directly proportional to delta P. Now for understanding of this R, we'll deal, uh, with R uh, we will deal afterward. First let's look at the delta P. Now, there are three different important pressures we have to discuss to understand this delta P. Now, what are those three pressures? Number one is the atmospheric pressure. Number two is the intra-alveolar pressure. And number three is the intra-pleural pressure. There are three pressures. Now, what, let's discuss what is the atmospheric pressure. It is the pressure which is, uh, which is exerted by the weight of the air on the uh, surface of the earth, the pressure which is exerted by the air in the atmosphere on the surface of the earth and its value is at the sea level, the atmospheric pressure is about 760 millimeters of mercury. We can take it as a zero. Okay, millimeters of mercury or we can take it as a zero reference point. We can zero consider it. Because this atmospheric pressure, it, it's acting on our body. Our body is acting on So, now like blood pressure, we say that normal blood pressure is 120 by 80. Okay? So, the blood ka pressure hai. Plus, this atmospheric pressure is also acting on our body. This is also add-on on it. So, we take blood pressure in the blood ka pressure. Lete that is 120 by 80. Ideally, our blood pressure 120 plus 760. Hona this pressure is exerted on the body. To par, air ka pressure bhi. plus a, air pressure plus the blood ka jo pressure combined to uh, determine the value of blood pressure. 
लेकिन हम सिर्फ उसमें वन ट्वेंटी बाई एटी लेते हैं यानी वी आर इग्नोरिंग दिस प्रेशर तो यहाँ भी अगर हम इसको इग्नोर कर रहे हैं बिकॉज एट द सी लेवल दिस प्रेशर इज कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर एवरी वन सो हम उसको जीरो से भी ले सकते हैं कि हमने कह दिया दैट प्रेश एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर इज जीरो और टू बी वेरी एक्यूरेट इट इज सेवन सिक्सटी मिली मीटर्स ऑफ मर्करी ठीक है एट द सी लेवल दिस एटमोसफेरिक प्रेशर इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द बैरोमेट्रिक प्रेशर इसको आप दूसरा नाम क्या है बैरोमेट्रिक प्रेशर और एटमोसफेरिक प्रेशर इस वैल्यू इज सेवन सिक्सटी मिली मीटर्स ऑफ मर्करी और वी टेक इट एज अ रेफरेंस पॉइंट जीरो ओके नाउ दिस इज द सिंप्लीफाइड डायग्राम दिखाया है लंग्स का कि ये एयरवेज हो गए ठीक है दिस इज योर लंग है एंड दिस इज योर विसरल प्लूरा दिस इज योर पराइटल प्लूरा इन बिटवीन देर इज अ पोटेंशियल स्पेस विच इज नोन एज द प्लूरल स्पेस और द प्लूरल सैक एंड विच हैज अ थिन लेयर ऑफ फ्लूड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑलरेडी ठीक है सो दिस एयरवेज दे आर कनेक्टेड एंड यू कैन सी दे आर कनेक्टेड विद दे आर कनेक्टिंग द एटमोसफियर विद द लंग्स ठीक है एंड एट बिफोर द स्टार्ट ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन क्या होता है कि इफ यू सी दैट कोई इंस्पिरेशन नहीं हो रही है एयर तो जितना एयर इन द एटमोसफियर गेट्स इक्वली ब्रिएटेड विद द एयर इन द एटमोसफियरिक एयर एंड दुलर एयर दिस प्रेशर दे आर इक्वली ब्रिएटेड इसलिए दोनों का प्रेशर सेम है ठीक है दोनों इक्वली ब्रियम पर हैं और एयर अंदर बाहर नहीं आ रही है एंड दे आर द ओफ्लोटिस इज ओपन एंड द एयर इज इक्वली ब्रिएटेड दिस प्रेशर इज सेवन सिक्सटी मिली मीटर्स ऑफ मर्करी ओके नाउ अनदर प्रेशर वी हैव वी आर डिस्कसिंग डेल्टा पी हमने इसमें पहला प्रेशर डिस्कस कर लिया दैट इज द एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर नाउ द सेकंड प्रेशर इज द प्रेशर व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन द इन द एल्वुलाई ऑफ द लंग्स द प्रेशर व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन द एल्वुलाई ऑफ द लंग इट व्हेन इट इक्विलिब्रिएटेड विद द एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर इट इज इट्स वैल्यू इज आल्सो 760 और 0 मिलीमीटर्स ऑफ मर्करी simple it's intra alveolar pressure means the pressure within the lung alveoli it is also known as intra pulmonary pressure theek hai atmospheric pressure is also known as barometric pressure and the intra alveolar pressure is also known as intra pulmonary pressure sahi hai now the third pressure which is actually present in the pleural cavity the pressure within the pleural because there is a thin layer of fluid and that exerts a pressure and this pressure is exerted outside the lung in the thoracic cavity and it is its value is about 756 mm of mercury agar ye zero hai atmospheric pressure ye bhi zero hai to ye kitna ho gaya this will be minus 4 it's slightly negative pressure negative kyu hota hai isme continuously lymphatics jo hote hain they suck the fluid suction hoti rehti hai fluid ki which creates a negative pressure inside the pleural cavity and its value is minus 4 milli uh, minus 4 ya hum kahenge 756 mm of mercury okay and this pressure is also known as intrathoracic pressure because it is the present outside the lungs within the thoracic cavity and this pressure is known as intrathoracic this pressure is known as intraalveolar and the pressure in the atmosphere is known as atmospheric pressure i hope you understand the three pressures the atmospheric or the petro barometric pressure second is the intra alveolar pressure and this pressure is same as that of atmospheric pressure when it, the glottis is open and at dono equilibrate kar rahe hain aur pressure abhi inspiration nahi hui hai expiration at the end of expiration हम कह रहे हैं अभी एक ब्रेथ खत्म हुई है दूसरी ब्रेथ स्टार्ट नहीं हुई है बिटवीन द ब्रेथ द प्रेशर गेट्स इक्वली ब्रिएटेड एंड इट्स सेम एज दैट ऑफ एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर एंड बिफोर द स्टार्ट ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन द इंट्रा प्यूरल प्रेशर और द इंट्राथोराइसिक प्रेशर इज सेवन सेवन फिफ्टी सिक्स मिली मीटर्स ऑफ मर्करी और इट्स अबाउट माइनस फोर हमने कह दिया प्रेशर उसके अंदर नाउ अनदर फैक्टर which was responsible for the air flow humne baat ki thi ke air flow f is equals to delta p upon r so delta p we have discussed that there are three pressures hain theek hai so air flow uh, abhi humne teen pressures padhe hain theek hai ke how the air flow abhi hum aage usko dekhenge ke air flow kaise hoga so uh, another factor discuss kar lete hain resistance 
Now this resistance is actually negligible in case of a normal person. ठीक है कोई resistance नहीं है when all the bronchioles and airways they are patent they are all open so resistance नहीं है actually resistance क्या चीज है actually it's the radius जो है ना इस main resistance का जो determinant है is the radius of the conducting airways. तो normally जो radius होता है सब they are all open there is no obstruction nor they are vaso uh, bronco constriction भी नहीं है they are all open है ठीक है और वी हैव डिस्कस के सिंपथेटिक और पैरासिंपथेटिक नर्वस सिस्टम दे कंट्रोल द डायमीटर ऑफ द और द रेडियस ऑफ दीज कंडक्टिंग एयरवेज हैं बट इफ देयर इज एनी ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीजेस देयर आर एनी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन हो जाती है तो रेजिस्टेंस क्या होगा बढ़ जाएगा रेजिस्टेंस टू द एयर फ्लो विल इंक्रीज है लाइक क्रोनिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीजेस हम करेंगे सीओपीडीस कहलाती हैं दीस सीओपीडीस Actually, in this condition, the actually there is increase in the resistance and there is difficulty in the air flow. Like in normal person, me air flow, the uh, main factor is it's only the delta P. Resistance is constant; it's negligible. There is no resistance in the movement of air flow in a normal person, unless and until if there is any disease state, which are known as chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, in which there is obstruction. इसकी वजह से रेजिस्टेंस टू एयर फ्लो बढ़ जाएगा नॉर्मली हम कहेंगे कि एयर फ्लो ओनली डिपेंड्स ऑन डेल्टा पी हम कह रहे हैं कि रेजिस्टेंस का फैक्टर नेग्लिजिबल है नाउ एयर फ्लो हमने कहा डिपेंड करता है ऑन द डेल्टा पी के ऊपर ठीक है इतना याद हो गया सबको कि एयर फ्लो ऑफ इन एंड आउट ऑफ द लंग यानी ब्रीदिंग इन एंड ब्रीदिंग आउट the air depends on the change in the pressure change in the pressure yani pressure ka change hona from high to low pressure change nahi hoga air is not going to flow theek hai jab pressure change hoga to air flow hoga ye sab ki samajh mein aayega now another law ek aapko yaad rakhna hai that is the boyle's law iska hum bahut zyada use karenge now what is boyle's law boyle's law kya kehta hai ke at a constant temperature at a given temperature the pressure which is exerted by the gas varies inversely with the volume of the gas ye aapne inter mein padha hoga ki pressure and volume ka inverse relationship hota hai if you look at this diagram you can see here that here the volume is less at all these uh, the, uh, the boyle's law is only for the gases the gas laws ke laate hain hai na boyle's and charles law they are known as the गैस लॉस ठीक है सो दे आर एप्लीकेबल ओनली फॉर गैसेस के लिए लिक्विड्स के लिए नहीं होता ये सो वेन एवर द वॉल्यूम इज रिड्यूस्ड द गैस प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज यू कैन ही सी दीज आर द गैस मॉलिक्यूल्स एंड दे आर अंडर हाई प्रेशर वेन एवर देयर वॉल्यूम इज रिड्यूस्ड हेयर यू कैन सी वॉल्यूम इज हाफ प्रेशर इज टू वॉल्यूम इज वन प्रेशर इज वन एंड हेयर देर इज अ लार्ज वॉल्यूम सो लेस प्रेशर इज बींग एक्सेप्टेड because there is a inverse relationship between the volume and the pressure whenever there is increase in the volume the pressure is going to decrease okay in this slide i will tell you that how <coughs> your chest cavity increase and decrease in diameter since we have to we have discussed that we have to increase the volume of the chest cavity so how the chest cavity volume increase or decrease so the it is uh, actually the first action is by the downward and upward movement of the diaphragm now you can see here that this is the diaphragm and this is a dome shaped muscle normally uh, during actually uh, the diaphragm is a dome shaped muscle and it separates the thoracic and the abdominal cavity in a normal uh, relaxed uh, position when it is not contracting it is dome shape and it decreases the vertical diameter then whenever it contracts it flattens and due to flattening it moves <clears throat> downward and it leads to the increase in the vertical diameter so the downward movement of the diaphragm leads to the lengthening of the chest cavity which leads to increase in the chest cavity diameter okay and the vertical diameter actually is increased by downward movement of diaphragm and when diaphragm relaxes the vertical diameter of the chest cavity decreases simple second is 
mechanism is by the elevation and depression of ribs second mechanism to increase the uh, lung uh, to increase the thoracic volume is by the elevation and depression of the ribs now what happens when the ribs they are elevated the sternum moves forward and the anterior posterior diameter of the chest cavity is increased you can see the anterior posterior diameter is increased just by the elevation of the ribs and if there is depression of the ribs the sternum moves backward and the anterior posterior diameter of the chest cavity decreases so there are two ways by which the diameter is increased either there is vertical diameter is increased or there is anterior posterior diameter is increased vertical diameter is increased by the contraction of diaphragm and um, uh, uh, anterior posterior diameter is increased by the elevation of the ribs vertical diameter is decreased by the relaxation of the diaphragm and anterior posterior diameter is decreased by the depression of the ribs so now we have discussed all the uh, pressures so now we are discussing how this air is going to move in and out of the lung so that is known as the mechanics and we will discuss the mechanics during uh, quiet restful inspiration and uh, actually we will discuss four things that mechanics during uh, quiet restful inspiration during forceful inspiration during quiet expiration and during uh, forceful expiration so the first one is the mechanics during quiet restful inspiration then when the person is inspiring during the restful states like when he or she is just sitting so the major inspiratory muscle during quiet inspiration we discussed that it is the diaphragm which is the major inspiratory muscle and it is in innervated by the phrenic nerve in a normal relaxed state it is in a dome shape and then when it contracts it flattens and it moves downward and due, due to which the uh, vertical diameter of the thoracic cavity is going to increase now other muscle that is the external intercostal muscle and this in external intercostal muscle is actually the muscle which is innervated by the intercostal nerves and whenever it contracts it elevates the ribs and moves the sternum forward which results in increase in the anterior posterior diameter so now both the diameters are increased the vertical diameter is, is increased by the contraction of the diaphragm and uh, the anterior posterior diameter is increased by the contraction of the external contract uh, external intercostal muscles in so whenever the two diameters are increased what will happen the thoracic cavity because if diameter has increased naturally the lungs they are going to expand and whenever they, they are going to expand according to boys law increase in volume drops the pressure so during inspiration the intra alveolar pressure drops so the pressure is going to drop now let's discuss what happened to the pressures over here you can see that before inspiration i told you uh, that before inspiration starts the two pressures the atmospheric pressure and the alveolar pressure they are same because the alveolar pressure gets equilibrated with the atmospheric pressure and both pressures are equal and there is no, no no net movement of the air and at that time the pleural pressure is negative and that is about minus 4 mm of mercury or we say 756 mm of mercury so now during inspiration when once uh, the inspiratory muscles both the uh, diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles they contract and increases both the dimensions the vertical and the anterior posterior diameter of the chest cavity increases the uh, chest cavity expand and so do the lungs expand and expansion according to the boyle's law whenever the, there is increase in the volume there is drop in the pressure so when volume is increased the pressure is drop both in the alveolus and also in the pleural cavity the pressure is going to drop from 760 now it becomes 759 and in the pleural space the pressure was 756 and it drops to 754 or minus 6 mm of mercury keep in mind that these pressures they are in mm of mercury okay so uh, now the air is going to flow from high pressure in the atmosphere 
to the low pressure in the alveoli. There is just a difference of 1 millimeters of mercury and that is uh, the pressure will drop to minus 1 or we say 759 in the alveolus due to increase in the lung volume according to Boyle's law. So, the air is going to move in the alveolus and it's about with each inspiration about 500 ml of air enters from atmosphere into the lung alveolus. Now, this air will flow till again the two pressures they become equal and gets equilibrated. So, at the end of the inspiration again this pressure has become 760 millimeters or 0 because again now the two pressures they get equilibria, equilibrated and the air will move in and the, this air flow will stop when the this pressure the alveolar pressure gets equilibrated again with the atmospheric pressure. So, 75% of the enlargement of the thoracic cavity during quiet inspiration is due to only the contraction of the diaphragm. About 75 to 80% is due to the contraction of diaphragm and only about 20 to 25% of quiet inspiration is achieved by external costal muscles. Okay. Now, we, are, we talk about the uh, uh, mechanics during forceful inspiration. Now, what happens? There are additional muscles which are known as accessory muscles of inspiration. They are accessory muscles because they are used only during forceful inspiration. Now, when you are climbing stairs or when you are playing, when you are exercising, you need more oxygen to enter into your lungs because this oxygen should be delivered to the exercising muscles. So, more oxygen is delivered only when there will be more increase in the volume and more drop in the pressure. This is pressure we have studied 756 to 760 it drop to 759. So, this will drop hoga, depending on the severity of the exercise you are performing and how vigorously you are contracting your uh, muscles of inspiration. But those muscles since they are used only during the forceful inspiration, so, those muscles, they are known as the muscles of inspiration and they are further responsible for increasing the diameter of the chest cavity and which muscles they are actually, they are sternocleidomastoid, serratus anterior, scalenae and pectoralis minor. Now, the action of these muscles you will study in uh, anatomy but uh, when the muscles contract, what they do? They actually usually they elevate the rib or they move the sternum forward and both of these functions together will lead to increase in the anterior posterior diameter of the chest cavity leading to the expansion of the lungs and causing the air more amount of air to enter into the lungs during forceful inspiration. So what are the name of muscles? Accessory muscles they are the sternocleidomastoid, serratus anterior scalenae and pectoralis minor. So, we did how the inspiration process is occurring during forceful uh, or sternus uh, uh, exercise vagera mein, during forceful inspiration mein, how the accessory muscles they are causing the uh, forceful inspiration. Okay, now let's discuss the mechanics of ventilation during quiet expiration. Now, this quiet expiration after the inspiration is over, I, uh, we discussed that inspiration is over. Now, the inspiratory muscles, they get relaxed. There are two set of muscles. The, for the diaphragm, when it relaxes, it, it takes its original dome-shaped position. Again, it becomes like this in a relaxed state. It is take its normal dome shape position and when the uh, intercostal muscles, the external intercostal muscles, they relax, what will happen? The rib cage that was elevated, it falls again because of the gravity. Okay. So, now there are no forces to keep the lungs and the chest wall in the expanded position. Okay. So, what will happen? So, the chest wall and this lungs which were expanded, now they move or they can uh, they actually recoil back to their pre-inspiratory sites again they move to their original sites okay i repeat that when these muscles relax there is nothing to 
make them stretch no forces are available to make the expansion of the chest wall and the lungs so what happens the chest wall and the stretch lungs they recoil back to their pre inspiratory size okay because they have elastic properties and that phenomena is known as elastic recoil okay it means recoil elastic recoil means rebound it is stretched okay if it was stretched now it rebound back back to its original size so it's just as that when you release a stretch balloon what will happen when you release a stretch balloon all the air will go out so similarly over here when uh, uh, the lungs the chest cavity and the lungs they shrink to the pre inspiratory size due to elastic recoil the volume is now decreased the lung volume is decreased and the pressure is going to increase here in this diagram you can see that when the lung volume has decreased what will happen the pressure jo yahan equilibrate ho ke during inspiration at the end of inspiration it was equilibrated with the atmospheric pressure so now this pressure increases to about 761 only a change of 1 uh, mm of mercury and the air is going to flow from high uh, pressure in the alveolus to the low pressure in the atmosphere and it will move out till the again the both pressures get equilibrated and the alveolar pressure now will become equal to 750 760 at the end of expiration and this end of expiration is uh, is the uh, period before the other inspiration starts hai na ye end hua and before inspiration start next inspiration to ye dono pressures aap dekh rahe ho they become equilibrated and moreover the intrapleural pressure it also because the lung volume has now uh, decreased so intrapleural pressure it increases back to its pre inspiratory level that is 750 Six. So, just a pressure difference of one millimeter will causes the 500 mL of air to move out during expiration. So, we discussed that quiet, normal quiet expiration is just achieved by the relaxation of the inspiratory muscles. and that's why the quiet expiration is the passive phenomena as compared to the uh, normal quiet inspiration which is active because we say something active because there is actively the muscles they are contracted but in case of uh, quiet expiration since no muscle is contracting it's just the relaxation of the muscles of inspiration both the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles they simply gets relaxed and expiration occurs by the ex uh, by the elastic recoil of the structures that is the uh, elastic recoil of the uh, thorax and the chest wall now uh, the diaphragm which is the major muscle of inspiration during quiet inspiration and as its relaxation can cause expiration so if there is paralysis of external intercostal muscles it does not affect the normal quiet breathing if both the intercostal muscles they are paralyzed then what will happen normal quiet breathing will not be affected because the diaphragm which is the major muscle of inspiration and its relaxation bring about expiration also and we discussed that 80% of the inspiration is achieved by the relax, uh, contraction of the diaphragm and simply by it relaxing it the expiration will be possible so if there is any pathology we leads to the damage to the intercostal muscles so normal quiet breathing will not be affected and one very important thing is that the diaphragm is supplied from the uh, the phrenic nerve and it uh, its root value or it arises from the cervical segment of the spinal cord this c3 c4 c5 okay its root value uh, and it is arising from the cervical segment although it is present in the thoracic uh, thorax and uh, it should have been supplied by the thoracic uh, segment of the spinal cord but fortunately it is supplied by the uh this uh, cervical segment of the spinal cord if so if a person is traumatized at this level that is if the spinal cord is damaged at the thoracic level and uh, the person is still able to breathe because the diaphragm is actually innervated by the uh, cervical segment which is not damaged if the cervical segment is not damaged so if a person is paralyzed below the neck neck region if there is a damage to spinal cord and he or she is paralyzed so still a person can breathe 
because the diaphragm is intact and diaphragm is enough for normal quiet inspiration and expiration. Okay, now let's discuss the mechanics during forceful expiration. Now during force, the forceful expiration is the active process. Why it's active process? Because now it needs the contraction of the muscles. So the muscles, they only contract during forceful expiration. And no muscle contracts during normal quiet expiration. So what are the muscles which are uh, activated during forceful act? Means during when you are doing some exercise or climbing stairs or cycling or any act of uh, forceful work when you are performing, you need to uh, contract your uh, muscles which are known as the uh, muscles uh, of forceful expiration and those are the internal intercostal muscles and the abdominal muscles. Now the internal intercostal muscles has just the opposite function to that of the external intercostal muscles. In the in when the internal intercostal muscles to contract, they depresses the ribs and they move the sternum backwards. It's just the opposite to, the to that of external intercostal muscle. So when the ribs are depressed and sternum moves backward, there is a decrease in the anterior posterior diameter of the chest wall. When the diameter of the chest wall is decreased, lungs they are also contracted and the pressure actually in the lung or the thoracic cavity, the pressure is going to increase. Uh, further, the abdominal muscles, they are also contracted. Now, these abdominal muscles, they are present in the abdominal wall and once these muscles contract, they increase the intra-abdominal pressure. The increase in the intra-abdominal pressure will move, will move the abdominal cont contents upward towards the thorax. And when they push the diaphragm upwards, again the volume of the chest cavity or the, we say that the volume of the lung is going to decrease and this decrease in the volume according to the Boyle's law will lead to further increase in the pressure and the air is going to move from high pressure to low pressure towards the atmosphere. So this is how the person expires and now this uh, rise in pressure depends on the severity of the uh, exercise you are performing. The more severe you are performing the exercise, the more the muscles they get act uh, forcefully, they contract and they uh, causes the further increase in pressure. And actually, jitna volume kam hota jayega, lung ka utna pressure badta jayega. Pressure increase hoga and the air is going to move from high pressure that is from the alveoli into the atmosphere. So, the forceful expiration is the active process because it involves the contraction of the muscles which are two set of muscles, internal intercostal and abdominal muscles. So, one uh, important pressure that is the transpulmonary pressure or transmural pressure. The word trans means uh, across and mural means wall. The pressure exerted across the wall. By simple definition, it is just the pressure difference between the intraalveolar and intrapleural pressures. There are two pressures. One is in the alveoli that is known as intraalveolar pressure. And other is the pressure in the pleural cavity that is known as intrapleural pressure. And the pressure is this transmural or transpulmonary pressure is the pressure difference between this intraalveolar and intrapleural pressure. Okay, so we know that uh, intraalveolar pressure is always greater than the intrapleural pressure. Always greater. It's about 760. Uh, when it is equilibrated with the atmospheric pressure during inspiration it drops minus one during expiration it becomes plus one or 761 but it is always greater whether during inspiration or expiration it is more as compared to intrapleural pressure okay so this pre greater pressure is pushing the wall now we are talking about this wall the wall which exists between the, the, we are talking, we said that transmural pressure is across the wall. So, which wall? The wall which is present between the two pressures. So, this, the pressure which is exerted on this wall, okay, on the lung wall. So, uh, the greater pressure, actually the out, uh, the greater pressure is pushing this wall in this direction, okay. This is greater pressure and this pressure is exerted on this wall in this direction. Okay, 
so it is exerting the pressure towards outside so it is helping the lungs to remain in the distended position got it so as since a greater push your pressure is pushing outward then pushing inwards now this pressure is going to push the lung push the this wall inwards hai na it is pushing inwards and this pressure is pushing outwards so more pressure is pushing outward and this is actually uh, the net pressure is pushing outward so the lungs will uh, be in a stretched or distended position okay so this transmural pressure is a very important pressure which keeps the lung in the distended position both during inspiration and expiration even during expiration after uh, during expiration the the lungs they are in a, they do not collapse after the expiration is over they remain a slight degree of distended because of the difference in the intraalveolar and pleural pressure which is known as the transpulmonary pressure due to this pressure gradient the lungs they assume a distended position because you know that uh, to blow a balloon which is totally collapsed is more difficult so after expiration is over your lungs they do not recoil back to or, or they do not actually uh, completely collapse they remain somewhat distended because of this transpulmonary transpulmonary pressure difference so because of this pressure gradient this transpulmonary pressure gradient the lungs they are always forced to expand to fill the thoracic cavity they are slightly in the distended position so it helps in the expansion of lungs by overcoming the elastic recoil force because the elastic recoil they tend to uh, rebound this uh, lungs and the thoracic wall back to its original uh, resting state or jo uh, hai to the it causes the lungs to contract but the, uh, this transpulmonary pressure helps in expansion of the lung because this force is is much greater uh, uh, much greater in the outward direction as compared to inward direction now let's discuss this graph which shows different pressures particularly the transpulmonary pressure let's discuss the pressure changes during different phases of ventilation that is both during inspiration and expiration now this graph shows the first this pink one it shows the intrapulmonary pressures during both inspiration and expiration at the beginning of inspiration when the two pressures they get equally created the atmospheric and the intraalveolar pressure so its pressure is same as that of the atmospheric pressure we have taken as zero and uh, intrapulmonary pressure you can see it drops as the person inspire and this pressure drops and air moves inside about 500 ml and then uh, during expiration it equilibrates with the atmospheric pressure and again it become at the end of inspiration the two pressures get equilibrated and again it becomes zero now at the start of expiration the uh, the inspiratory muscles relax and the elastic recoil of the chest wall decreases the lung volume and the pressure increases to plus 1 you can see now the pressure starts increasing to plus 1 and uh, the air is going to move out the, the air moves out because from high pressure in the alveolus to the low pressure in the atmosphere and this moves out till the two pressures they again get equilibrated and at the end of expiration the same picture occurs that the pressure reaches back to zero that is equilibrated with the uh, intra alveolar uh, intra sorry the alveolar pressure gets equilibrated with the atmospheric pressure now second is the intrapleural pressure this white portion this is showing the intrapleural pressure here uh, actually the value they have shown at the start of inspiration is minus uh, near about minus 3 tak dikha hai unhone but we had studied and you also remember that the intrapleural pressure at the start of inspiration is a bit lower uh, it's about minus 4 mm of mercury at the start of inspiration and then it becomes more negative during inspiration it becomes minus 6 and at the uh, uh, after the inspiration is over and then expiration occurs and during expiration you can see it is moving back towards its normal uh, minus 4 so this is the pressure which is the intrapleural pressure 
Now what happens, the difference between the two pressures is known as the transpulmonary pressure. This is the transpulmonary pressure during expiration. You can see that this pressure gradient is present both during expiration and also during inspiration. This gradient is present in both uh, situations, means that this pressure gradient is maintained, means the intraalveolar pressure is always greater, is always more than the intrapleural pressure and this pressure, since it, this pressure is acting uh, in outward direction, so it is helping the lungs to, keep, to remain in the distended position of the, uh, and it actually overcome the elastic forces. Otherwise, the lung has a natural tendency to recoil. So, uh, it prevents the transpulmonary pre uh, pressure, it keeps the lung in distended position by overcoming the elastic forces of the lung otherwise the lung would have collapsed by the elastic forces so this transpulmonary pressure what is the function if someone asks you this is the pressure difference and it helps in the distension of the lungs okay up till now we have discussed the pressures in the millimeters of mercury we have measured here but in Guyton and other books, we have to, uh, pressure in centimeter of water. Pressure is measured in seven centimeters of water. There is a slight difference uh, between the millimeter pressure and centimeter of water pressure. Uh, one millimeter of mercury pressure is equal to one, 1 1.3 centimeters of water. Okay, it's not difference. Right? Okay, one millimeters mercury is equal to 1.3 centimeters of water. Okay, so now um, uh, keep in mind the previous uh, pressures in millimeters mercury. We have said that 760, either the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters or we took at, uh, we take it as uh, 0 millimeters of mercury. Now we have 0 millimeters mercury. We have said that that pressure is 0 centimeters of water. Okay, so reference point from the 0 centimeters mercury. So before inspiration it starts, when you, at the end of previous expiration and before the start of next inspiration. The intra pressure, we have read that intra pressure was 0 before the start of inspiration and it equilibrates with the atmospheric pressure and that's why both the pressures were same and it was 0 centimeters we have Okay, 0 centimeter of water. Hai. Now at that point the intrapleural pressure jo hai, in, in uh, millimeter mercury it's about minus 4 tha. Agar aapko yaad ho, minus 4 intrapleural pressure tha. Lekin yahan par jo hai, it is about minus 5 centimeters of water. Intrapleural is minus 5. Intraalveolar is 0. And uh, uh, now the inspiration start. When the inspiration muscles contract and inspiration starts, the intraalveolar pressure it drops to minus one. It drops to minus one, and intrapleural pressure becomes minus eight. Okay, usme kya tha? Minus six hota tha millimeters of mercury. But here it is minus eight centimeters of water. Aap minus six ko multiply kar lijiye, one point three se. Minus six tha na millimeters ko centimeter mein convert karne ke liye, multiply by one point three. So, minus 6 when multiplied by 1.3, it will give you minus 8. And here, minus 4 tha na, millimeters mein. Minus 4 ko 1.3 se multiply ki to minus 5 a jayega. Simple hai, just you have to multiply the millimeters uh, ke jo values hai, unko 1.3 se multiply kar di So, you will get the pressures in the centimeter of water. Okay. So, during expiration, the intra pressure plus 1 of water pe chala gaya. And intrapleural pressure it moves back again to minus five centimeters of water. So up for your convenience, I have uh, uh, told you the pressure both in the millimeters of mercury and in the centimeter of water. Okay, now uh, let's see uh, what happens if excess fluid or air gets accumulated in the pleural sac or pleural cavity so uh, when a pleural uh, effusion is actually an abnormal collection of fluid when there is an excess of fluid which is accumulated in the pleural cavity this condition is known as pleural effusion now this pleural effusion may be due to excess fluid production or decreased absorption or both so pleural effusion is the term 
used to define an abnormal collection of fluid in the pleural space. And what is pneumothorax? Pneumothorax is actually the presence of air or gas in the pleural cavity. Now both are abnormal conditions and what they affect, how they affect actually the transpulmonary pressure. First is if fluid can, uh, it impairs breathing. It has impact that a person has difficult in, feel difficulty in breathing because uh, it limits the expansion of the lungs. Here you can see the good diagram. Over here you can see that the air or the fluid is built in this pleural space and they have causes the collapse of the lung which leads to impaired breathing because now the expansion of the lung is not possible here all fluid or the air is being accumulated in the pleural sac so what happens i told you about the transpulmonary pressure which is the difference between the pressure in the alveoli and this in the pleural space so as the fluid and air accumulate in this pleural space the pressure is going to increase in the pleura and if this pressure becomes equal to alveolar pressure, both the pressures are equal. What will happen to the transpulmonary pressure? The transpulmonary pressure will become zero. Okay. So, this means there is no uh, transpulmonary pressure difference exists, which I told you that this transpulmonary pressure is actually helping in uh, the expansion of the lung against the elastic recoil so lungs has the natural tendency to recoil and elasticity and they have the ability to recoil back to their normal position so what happened that if and this pressure difference which is known as the transpulmonary pressure which helps in the distension of the lung so if this does not exist its value becomes zero so what will happen the lungs they are going to collapse because of the inherent elastic recoil property and the lungs they are going to collapse and this collapsed lung will have a problem in its uh, in, uh, problem in breathing because the expansion of the lung is now not possible so now let's quickly review or revise what we have done in the previous slides now during inspiration now before the inspiration start look at this picture the inspiration has not started the diaphragm is relaxed and it is in a dome position and uh, what happens the, all the muscles the diaphragm is also relaxed and external intercostal muscles they are relaxed so the air in the alveoli is equilibrated or is equal to the atmospheric air Pressure, so pressures are both equal, so no air is going to flow in and out of the lungs. At this time, the intraalveolar pressure is zero. We have taken the atmospheric pressure also zero, and intrapleural pressure is about minus four. Now the inspiration starts. During this inspiration, the muscles they contract, increasing the diameter of the chest wall, and the lungs volume. You can see here it was shown a lower lung volume, and here the lung volume uh, increases due to expansion of the chest cavity. The in, due to expansion of the chest cavity, intraalveolar pressure now drops from 0, it becomes minus 1 and intrapleural pressure, it becomes uh, from minus 4, it becomes minus 6 and uh, air will flow from high pressure in the atmosphere uh, towards the low pressure in the alveolus. Okay, so now the air is moving and about how much air is mo mo going to move during each inspiration? About 500 ml which is known as the tidal volume and this air now moves in the lungs during each inspiration. Now air will move at the end of inspiration what will happen this is during inspiration now at the, at the end of the inspiration uh, since air is moving inside now again the two pressures get equilibrated and now the alveolar, uh, alveolar pressure again becomes zero because inward movement will, uh, will causes the equilibrium uh, state to achieve at this point again the two pressures will become equal the atmospheric and the alveolar pressure and the air will stop coming inside. So this is the end of inspiration. Now the inspirations end. But what happens during forceful inspiration? During forceful inspiration, diaphragm and external intercostal muscles, they are also uh, contracting and they start contracting vigorously. Moreover, the accessory muscles of inspiration, they also contract, further increasing the chest volume and the lung volume and further drop in pressure. Now, this drop in pressure depends upon how forceful uh, the forceful act one is performing. 
so it more forceful like more uh, vigorously the muscles they are contracting and more increase in lung volume further drop in pressure and the air will move from high pressure in the uh, atmosphere to the low pressure in the alveolus so the now the more amount of air will reach beyond the tidal volume now this 500 ml of air is not enough so more amount of air the maximum uh, air which a person can inhale during the forceful inspiration is about 3000 uh, 3000 ml okay it's extra amount beyond the tidal volume for the person which uh, inhale during the forceful act the maximum limit is 3000 ml and this volume is known as inspiratory reserve volume okay we will discuss afterwards but at here uh, during normal quiet inspiration 500 ml of air gets in and during forceful respiration up till 3000 ml of air gets in depending on the severity of the uh, uh, forceful act which you are performing so this slide is summarizing the ventilatory mechanics during the process of expiration so uh, uh, what happens before the start of expiration first at the end of expiration after sorry at the end of inspiration we discussed that uh, there is an, yes the end of inspiration that now the inspiration has finished and the two pressures the alveolar and the atmospheric pressures they are equilibrated now the further movement of air has stopped now what happens that the, your inspiratory muscles they start relaxing both the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles they relax and they decrease both the vertical and uh, the vertical and the uh, anterior posterior diameter of the chest wall decreases so leading to decrease in lung volume and increase in the pressures and alveolar pressure will increase to one atmospheric pressure or uh, 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 plus 1 or 1 uh, mm or we can say it is it becomes 760 mm of mercury and intrapleural pressure come back to its normal value of about 4 minus 4 or we say 756 mm of mercury and high pressure in the alveolus lead to movement of air out of the lung towards the low pressure so this is the act which is occurring during the uh forceful uh, sorry during the normal tidal expiration and a tidal volume of 500 ml leaves the lung with each expiration so this expiration is just a passive phenomena because the simply the muscles get relaxed and when the muscles get relaxed what happens that the diaphragm and the external uh, diaphragm moves to its normal position and then the elastic recoil uh, of the lungs causes the lung to decrease in volume and increase in pressure and the air moves from high pressure to low pressure now what happens during the forceful expiration your muscles now they contract there are two muscles of you which are contracted during forceful expiration are the internal intercostal and abdominal muscles when they contract they decrease the chest diameter further and uh, um, extra amount of air is going to move inside the lung beyond the tidal volume and that extra amount is known as the Uh, expiratory reserve volume which you will do afterward uh, the amount of extra amount of air which is expired beyond the tidal volume during the forceful act now this depend this uh, uh, increase in pressure during the expiration during forceful expiration depends upon the severity of the forceful act which you are performing Okay, let's uh, do this BCQ, and uh, which of the following represents the pressure difference that acts to distend the lungs? Number A, alveolar pressure. Number B, pleural pressure. Number C, transthoracic pressure, and number D, transpulmonary pressure. <clears throat> so, what do you think? Which one is correct? <clears throat> you have to focus on few things over here. That is. pressure difference and which helps in distension of the lungs so as i told you it's the transpulmonary pressure which is the pressure difference between the alveolar pressure and pleural pressure and <clears throat> this is helping in the distension of the lung against its elastic recoil okay this is the next question during inspiration how does alveolar pressure compare to atmospheric pressure 
the answer is alveolar pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure alveolar pressure is less than atmospheric pressure alveolar pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure alveolar pressure becomes positive and atmospheric pressure becomes negative so what happens during inspiration what do you think what may be the answer during inspiration keep in mind that the lung volume has increased and pressure is going to drop so the alveolar pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure it is not greater it is not equal it doesn't become positive so it is less than the atmospheric pressure i hope you understand which of the following factors decreases the resistance in lung airways decrease the diameter of the airways increase velocity parasympathetic stimulation and sympathetic stimulation focus on decrease the resistance means air flow increase you know so decrease the diameter will increase the resistance increase velocity of airway has nothing to do with the air flow uh, nothing to do with the resistance parasympathetic stimulation what does the parasympathetic do it causes bronchoconstriction so bronchoconstriction so diameter decreases so the resistance is going to increase here the word is decrease the resistance so sympathetic stimulation causes bronchial dilation bronchioles they get dilated so resistance is going to decrease so correct answer is sympathetic stimulation okay students thank you thanks for listening any queries you can contact me by my email thank you stay safe